in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit on the first day of September and traditionally the last observed weekend of our summer season for vacationing. Usually a lot of people figure summer starts on Memorial Day and ends on Labor Day, which is tomorrow in our church year. We also are thinking about Pumpkin Fest here at St. Anne's Church. We have allowed the village to utilize our hall for their fundraisers and all those kind of fun things. And St. Anne's is doing really well and we wanna support the good folks in this village as much as we can. We're very thankful that the village of St. Anne has installed that generator for both our rectory and our community center. And then eventually we'll get a generator here for the church to make sure if people are coming to mass that they will be protected and they will be loved because they are that important and so are you. As we gather to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us take a moment to call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you are the Alpha and Omega. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are our beginning and our end. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all of our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name so that depending on our sense of reverence, you may nurture us in what is good and by your watchful care keep safe what you have nourished through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord your God, which I enjoin upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will give you an evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations, who will hear of all these statutes and say, this great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? Or what great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law which I am setting before you today? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. Whoever walks blamelessly and does justice, who thinks the truth is in his heart and slanders not with his tongue. The one who does justice 
will live in the presence of the Lord, who harms not his fellow man nor takes up reproach against his neighbor, by whom the reprobate is despised, while he honors those who fear the Lord. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord, who lends not his money at usury and accepts no bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be disturbed. The one who does justice will live in the presence of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He willed to give us birth by the word of truth, that we may be kind of firstfruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. When the Pharisees with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. On coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and bowl, beds. So the Pharisees and the scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, well, did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites as it is written, the people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching his doctrines, human precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters from the outside can defile a person, but the things that come out from within are what defile. From within people, from their hearts, come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come with, from within, and they defile. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When I was 10 years old and my family moved from Bolingbrook to Sandwich, Illinois, and I lived on a three-acre farm in the middle of nowhere uh, on the corner of Gleddy and County Line Road, we went to church at St. Paul's the Apostle Church in Sandwich right next to the post office and across the street from Art Supermarket. That church eventually was lifted up and moved all the way next to their parish center on the outskirts of town. The pastor at the time was named Father Thomas Kane. He was there for a good 20 some years. Many parishes had people like Father Kane serving for that kind of time. Father Kane, when I was 10 years old, realized that the one quality I had in life was a big mouth. In fact, when I was in the seminary and I used to, as a seminarian, go out and preach, people would be evaluating me saying, what is uh, Peter Jankowski's greatest quality? And they said, he is loud. I guess volume is a quality as a Catholic priest. 
So Father Cain asked me at 10 years old if I would serve as a lector at Mass at the church to read the scripture readings prior to the gospel. So I did that for a few years, and then Father Cain encouraged me to go on to high school, seminary, and then college, and so on. I was 10 years old. I was reading these scripture readings, and you know this because for anybody who reads at Mass, sometimes when we get to the book of Chronicles or the books of Kings, there are words and big titles that are very difficult to pronounce. They actually come out with books of pronunciation so you can learn these long names and try to pronounce them correctly. Even at the masses in our local communities, people will come to me and say, how do you pronounce this word or that? When I was 10 years old and there was a visiting priest named Father John that would come to the church, Father John was very strict. He would yell at people who were not doing the proper things at mass and he would yell at me if I was doing the same. So I went to Father John prior to the Mass because I was afraid of him, and I asked him, how do you pronounce the name and the title of the book of our first reading? And he said, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy. And he'd make me say that over and over again, but he was intimidating, and he really scared me. And then I was really afraid of how I was going to say it at Mass. And lo and behold, because I was afraid and because I didn't know, I ended up getting up at the podium at the lectern, just like I'm doing now, and I tried to announce the reading from the book that we had just read. I would say the reading from the book of do, 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 and then Father John from over at the presider's chair would say, Deuteronomy! And under normal circumstances, every kid would probably be scared out of the church from ever wanting to come back and serve again. But actually, that was a good lesson for me, because then when kids are serving at Mass or someone is reading at Mass, I hope and pray that I'll be a whole lot more charitable to that person than Father John was for me. But there is a lesson to be learned from this, because in that book of Deuteronomy, Moses is taking the people as far as they're going to go before they reached the promised land. 600,000 men and their families left Egypt, that place of slavery, and for 40 years wandered in the wilderness before they reached their destination. As it is told in this book, no one except for Joshua and Caleb stayed faithful to God. All of them ended up dying before they reached their destination. Before they came into Canaan, Moses was about to die. Moses decided that he was going to summarize everything that was taught in those first five books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and then Deuteronomy, summarizing what the people needed to know before they entered the promised land. Now, it is said that the scholars who put all this together completed these texts around the time of the Babylonian exile, around the 6th century BC. So they knew the end of the story and they knew what Moses was going to tell the people, the people were not going to follow because that is the way of our world. No matter how many times we tell people not to do something, they do it anyway. We I talk about it with kids. Don't touch the flame, don't touch the flame, don't touch the flame. What does the kid do? He touches the flame and then he gets burned. And that is the story of life over and over and over again. It's the story of our faith life. No matter how many times we are taught this in the scriptures, and Deuteronomy mentions it, the gospel mentions it. We defile ourselves. On the inside, we want things our way instead of God's way, and so we condition ourselves to think that our way is better than God's way, and look what happens in the process. The communities fall, the countries fall, the governments fall. Everything falls, but God remains God, and God is the God of all time. God is the one who created the world. God is the one that gave us a choice to live with God or live in this world. And unfortunately, we made the wrong choice. And ever since then, God has been trying to get us back. Not a letter of the law, not the smallest tittle of a letter will expire before the word of God comes down. We are called to follow what God teaches us, but we don't. It's just the way of society. Our society has moved so far away from God in today's age that eventually the society will fall. It's not me telling you this. It's just history repeating itself. 
We get too full of ourselves and then we end up falling and then we have to build it all over again. We're going to be like an exile and then we're going to realize to get back on track, we have to follow the, what God tells us to do and what God tells us to do properly. And anyone who tells you that the commandments do not need to be followed by the letter, by the smallest part of the letter, they are misleading you. They are bad shepherds. They are false prophets. Not because I'm telling you this, not because it's my opinion, because the scriptures tell us this. What is inside is what defiles us if we think that we can judge God's word according to our standards rather than according to God's. That's why we come to Mass, to be fed by the word, to learn by the word, to receive this sacrament, and then to go out and be commissioned to be like Christ. And if we're not like Christ, then the scripture readings come full circle with us and we end up falling all over again, which most likely is the way that this country and this world is going to lead and we'll build it all over again and we'll have to start over. Moses taught us that in Deuteronomy. The story tells us that we're going to fall. Moses tells us we're going to fall. That's the way of life. But if we stay with God, God is God and God is love and we will get to heaven the few, many are called, few are chosen. If we stay with God, good things can happen. Let us not forget why we are here and how we got here. Let us realize what it's gonna take for us to get to heaven. During the summer, many people don't come to church because many people don't think it's important until we get to the school year and send our kids back to religious education. But this reading is meant for them, is meant for us, it is meant for all people that we meet. We must be like Christ. We must follow the commandments. We must do what God tells us to do if we ever want to get to heaven and spend the rest of our life with the one who created us and the one who wants to bring us home. This is our prayer. This is our prayer. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and of earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him, all things are made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection from the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Committed to following what God teaches us to do, let us take a moment to offer our prayers and petitions to the Lord. For those who have been humbled, that they truly may understand it is through humility that we reach heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer because of the gospel message, that God may give them strength to persevere, come what may, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the parishioners of St. Anne's, for St. Patrick's, for Camino y Esperanza, for all our viewers at home, that God may bless you all and them all for their wonderful service to our communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those, For those who teach, that they may be very resolute in what God is teaching them to offer the people under their care, we pray to the Lord. Lord, 
hear our prayer. For those who are sick, that God may comfort them through the hands of their caregivers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, that they may be welcomed by God in his heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for all the prayers offered this last week, that they and their families may be embraced by God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, continue to lead us, continue to guide us, to continue to show us the way to our eternal home through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands that will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever with humble spirit and contrite heart. May we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord of my iniquity, wash me and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father of mercies and faithful God. For you have given us Jesus Christ, your Son, as our Lord and Redeemer. He always showed compassion for children and for the poor, for the sick and the sinners, and he became a neighbor to the oppressed and the afflicted. By word and deed, he announced to the world that you are our father and that you care for all your sons and daughters. And so with all the angels and saints, we exalt and bless your name and sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who loved the human race and who always walks with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love and when, as once for the disciples and now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and gave, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand. We proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Bring your church, O Lord, the perfect faith and charity together with Francis our Pope and Ronald our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made for your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire in us words and actions to comfort those who are labored and burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and his command. May your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection, give them fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, with Saint Anne, Saint Patrick, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you forever through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of our Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of that peace. On you stay. Qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, O Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts to stir you in our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. So this time of year, we usually are taking registrations for religious education. At St. Anne's, it usually starts after the Pumpkin Fest. At St. Pat's, it starts at the beginning of September. Once again, students may not receive quinceañeras when they turn 15 unless they are confirmed. The quinceañera is a nice service, but the confirmation is a sacrament. And sacraments are essential for us getting to heaven. And that's why we're here, to get you to heaven by word and deed and setting the example for others to follow. So I would strongly encourage you to contact the parish office. You can fill out the forms online. They are located on the parish's website or call Emma Elvier at St. Anne's or St. Patrick's, and she will take care of you. Very thankful for Kim Emerson here at St. Anne's and John Reamer over at St. Patrick's for all their good work and their staffs and the teachers and all these wonderful people. If there's anything you need, just tell us. That's why we're here. The summer may be over with summer activities, but we still have a parish picnic to take place on September 15th over at St. Patrick's. We're going to have an outdoor bilingual liturgy at 10.30 in the morning. We're going to have the Fender Benders and the Saddle Shoe Sisters for music. We're going to have a vendor fair and a rummage sale. We're going to have kid activities. We are going to have all kinds of wonderful food. If you went to our fair last year, you will see so many people showed up. as a wonderful experience, and everybody is invited. The whole goal here is to just build good will and good morale among the people in the area we got to do that in, in the church. It's about praying and playing and studying and worshiping and living together. And if we do that, and if God is the center of everything that we do, then all these things are wonderfully directed in the right direction. Please feel free to join us at the picnic. Please register your kids for religious education. If you at home need to be anointed or visited, please contact us and we'll take care of you to the best of our ability. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass has ended. Now go in peace. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, Thrust down to hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.